Hi everyone, welcome back to the desk. This is Brett from Adventure Otaku, and we're going to do something a little bit differently today. Um, yesterday, as I was um, uh, playing around on on YouTube, I came across Ryan and Sophie's uh, sailing channel. I actually follow them, so I guess I didn't come across it. I knew it was there. Um, but it appeared that uh, from from the start of their video that something this was a little bit different and in watching the video I saw that this was relatively real time uh, only about a week or so old Whereas I think the rest of their videos. I think Sophie says in the video that they're uh, about a month or so behind um, and um, Turned out that there was some sort of medical issue on the boat at which immediately piqued my interest So if you don't know if you don't follow me elsewhere, you don't know that I'm a Knowles wilderness first aid instructor Prior to that, I was a New York State and nationally registered paramedic. And so I was super interested to see what was going on. I later found out by watching the video that Ryan and Sophie, um, before moving on to their boat, had taken a WFA course, which is the same course that I teach. Um, so I was super interested to see what happened. And um, essentially, um, Sophie got a burn on her uh, upper, I think, upper left thigh. Um, in the process of making a cup of coffee. Um, so I want to throw out a couple things first. The first is that I think Ryan and Sophie did a really excellent job in, um, in dealing with this issue. And um, uh, I just sort of want to break it down just for, for everyone else. This is just a great example of how, how prior training pays off for people in the backcountry, and I'm including um, open uh, blue water sailing as the backcountry. Um, and so I, I think they did a great job, and I just want to give people sort of a breakdown as to the thought process of what I think was going on, and from an instructor's point of view, what they what they were doing and, and hopefully what they were thinking about. Um, the other thing I want to add um, is I got permission from Ryan and Sophie to use their video. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to going to scroll around inside their video a little bit and sort of see what's going on. And so I, I think this is about where it starts. The coffee maker's been throwing it away. Well, but how am I going to make my coffee? We're gonna, we need to find something else. I've Since the day we bought that, I've been worried that this, would, this exact thing would happen, and now it has. And we're offshore, we're two days away from help, like, and you have third degree burns on your leg, you know. It's, it's not a safe thing to have on the boat. So right off the bat, I think this is just sort of a great assessment, but probably an assessment that should have been done a little bit earlier. Um, I think the two days offshore is super important. They're clearly in uh, a wilderness context for, for, for wilderness medicine. Um, it's not going to have any real uh, uh, changes in their process here, um, but they are isolated and are working from a, a book and a first aid kit and some previous training that honestly, if they're like everyone else, they've barely thought about since they did the training. Um, I, I will say, man, that coffee maker looked dangerous as soon as I saw it. Um, uh, boiling water burns are the second most common burn that we experience in the backcountry. The first is sunburn. Um, and so this is super common. I generally don't deal with sailors on courses. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure why that is, but I feel like um, the blue water sailors are, are, are less prone to take things like wilderness first aid courses. Um, I can only count one or two sailors that I've had in courses, and I've taught over a hundred of them. Um, uh, so kudos again to them for taking the course. Um, but we, prevention is always key, right? So you need to be thinking about that. And in general, I think Ryan and Sophie do a really good job with that. They always wear PFDs, um, in the cockpit. They're always tethered in the cockpit. I think they take, um, uh, safety super seriously, which I think is, is really good. But yeah, that coffee maker was, was definitely problematic. It's, um, it's bad. It's pretty bad. So it's already blistering a little bit, um, it looks sizable. It looks a little bit bigger than her hand. Um, she she measures it a little bit later on in the video, and I think it is just a little bit bigger than one palm. So not a huge burn, but just no fun, and is already sort of indicating um, uh, some some deeper issues. Uh, Ryan called it a third degree burn. We don't use first, second, third degree burn anymore. We haven't for 
a, at least a decade, um, everyone continues to use first, second, third degree burn because it's really easy and it makes sense. So naturally the medical community decided to change it. Um, we use um, superficial burn, partial thickness burn, and full thickness burn. A full thickness burn would be a third degree burn as Ryan called it. This is a partial thickness burn um, surrounded by a superficial burn on the edges. Um, and the indicator of that is the, the beginnings of the blisters is telling you that you've got a partial thickness burn. Um, and that's referring to the depth of the burn. Um, so we, right off the bat, we already know the size of the burn, about 1% or a little bit more of her body surface area as measured by one palm. Um, and we know the thickness is a, a, a partial thickness burn surrounded by a superficial burn. We need to get you to a hospital when we get back. No, it's okay. There's literally nothing that can be done. It needs to heal. We can see that Sophie has a wet towel and, um, and some ice on her leg, uh, which I think is great. I said in my comment on, on their video um, um, that I would have just gotten Sophie right in the shower or access to copious amounts of cold water. Uh, it's a little bit better than that towel and ice, but the towel and ice is certainly effective. Um, um, but my first choice is just copious amounts of liquid running cold water. The problem with the towel is that your skin, which is still burning, um, is warming the towel uh, at a faster rate probably than the towel is cooling the leg. And the ice is absolutely helping, um, but I think water is a, a better route. Now, Sophie commented to me, um, uh, or commented on her on their channel that um, uh, they didn't have enough water on board to do that because they were at sea. And I guess uh, that's a perfectly valid reason. You got to have water to drink. You need to stay hydrated. Um, they do have a water maker, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But in any case, I'm sure there was something going on that just didn't make that practical. Um, so water is a first choice. I think they have a great second choice there. Um, this is when I notice immediately that Ryan is holding a. A Knowles, a Knowles book. This is pretty funny. How is your airways? <laughs> How is your breathing? Circulation. Do you have any shock? So he's, they're sort of making a joke about this, but this is actually really important, particularly for burns. And so you've got to assess your patient. So you've got the burn, you know about the burn, but you need to go back to ABCs and make sure there isn't a life threat that you're missing. So airway, breathing, circulation are super important. We're talking to Sophie, Sophie is laughing. We know she has a good airway um, and can breathe. You, if you don't have a good airway and can't breathe, you can't talk and laugh. Um, but it, it makes light of the fact that we need to be thinking about the big picture. And at this point in the process of the patient assessment, we're still looking for life threats, right? And so I would, I would have said to Sophie, hey, did anything else happen? Did you fall down after you got the burn? Did you bump your head on the wall behind you? Anything like that. There was no loss of consciousness or anything like that. Be super thorough just so you have a full picture of what's going on with your patient. You can see Sophie is laughing because she thinks it's silly, but it, it's really important. Do you have any shock? <laughs> no, but I'll be honest and say that I'm really hungry and I'm getting a little dizzy. Okay, okay well, let's fix Okay, I don't think the dizzy is from the hungry. Maybe it is, I don't know Sophie. Um, maybe she's she's one of those people that when she gets hungry, she gets low blood sugar and a little dizzy. Um, I think the dizzy is adrenaline rush. And actually at this point, the adrenaline rush is probably starting to, to cool off, which is, is dropping her blood pressure. Um, and there was again, a little slide in joke there about you have signs and symptoms of shock. I'm going to make sure we monitor our patient for signs and symptoms of shock after we've gotten through the treatment phase of dealing with our patient. So a couple of things that we're joking around about, but really in, in the background, we should be thinking about those things. It's one... Just the size of my hand. Yeah. Okay. Maybe just a little bigger. So there's your 1% body surface area. Um, yeah. So not a huge burn, but I'm sure plenty painful. Cover with an antibiotic ointment or burn gel. We have both. Um. I vote for antibiotic. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, so a couple things. Ryan has has wonderfully diagnosed this or assessed this as a, uh, a partial thickness burn, um, and he's absolutely right. Probably surrounded by a little bit of a of a superficial burn. <clears throat> um, 
and they're discussing um, burn gel, antibiotic ointment, stuff like that. I don't think we're at that point yet. I think we, we need to keep cooling this burn down um, to the point where it's no longer radiating heat. It's no longer warming that cold towel or melting the ice. If it's putting off heat, then it's still technically burning. Um, uh, Ryan, when discussing what chard is, doesn't want to say something like, think of a steak or something like that. But honestly, we use food analogies a lot when we talk about burns. Um, when you take chicken off the grill, it keeps cooking, and so do human beings, um, with the grill in this case being the hot coffee. Um, and so we need to continue to keep cooling this burn. I don't think we're at the point yet where we need to be um, dealing with the, the dressing. We need to stop the burning first, and then down the road we need to go to the dressing. Um, I talked a, a couple times already about copious amounts of water. We don't want to use seawater in this situation. I'm sure someone is thinking, well, you've got the ocean right there. Let's just use seawater. Um, and the, the problem there is that there's all sorts of bacteria in seawater. We want to use fresh water for this. Um, so I think they're in the right place. I think they're just jumping ahead a little bit, um, which I, I think is perfectly normal. Yeah, I think the, is the burn itself we can't do anything about. You're absolutely right. No. So we need to keep it. We need to keep it not infected. Yeah. He's right, but the thing that we can do about the burn is to continue to cool it. We need to give it, uh, yeah, antibiotic burn gel. Do not drain the blisters, okay? <laughs> well, trust me, I did. It would not cross my mind. Perfectly normal. I've had many patients say to me after I tell them what I'm going to do, they're like, nope, you're not going to do that. There's no way that's going to happen. Perfectly normal. I'm going to leave it on that nice photo of Sophie with a mouthful of Weetabix. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. Um, at this point, they're talking a little about should they divert uh, to someplace closer. I don't think they need to. Um, I, I think the only mistake they make beyond this, I think they did a great job. Have I said that enough? I think they did a great job. Um, the only mistake that they made, um, so I think the only mistake that they make after this point is that Sophie stands watch. Uh, and it's a night watch at that. I, I don't think that's a great idea. And she has a really hard time doing it. Her body is dehydrated. Her body is stressed. Um, I, I would have just put her in, in bed uh, and made her comfortable and kept that thing iced. I would have, they have that option of antibiotic ointment or burn cream or burn gel. I would have done a burn gel for a couple hours and then gone to the antibiotic. Um, I'm more worried about cooling it than infection at this point, though infection is a major concern with burns. In general, I think they did a great job. Um, uh, and uh, I'm just going to throw out a couple things. I, I think Ryan uh, called his sister in the United States. Um, I, I don't know if she's a doc. She might be a doctor or something like that. And I think that's great is, is getting feedback from people if you can. That's the beauty of a situation like this where they've got a satellite phone. Um, I think they did everything great, and, and then they eventually they go to a hospital. Uh, it takes them a couple of tries. They go to a hospital and essentially get painkillers, um, and the doctor says, yeah, you, you're fine. It's a burn, right? And so I'm, I'm super happy with what they did. Um, a couple things that I would generally throw out to just about everyone in this situation is keep in mind that every two years you need to recertify your wilderness first aid certification. And in Ryan and Sophie's case, I would say that I think maybe think about doing the 10-day wilderness first responder if they have the time to do 10 days. Um, it's a, a, a bit more practice. A, a, you end up being a bit more comfortable with your skill set. Um, the other thing that I think is super important here is that they now have this experience of, of working through the process um, when I train new outdoor educators, I'll, you can tell the ones that have dealt with problems in the backcountry. They just have um, a, a, a more focused demeanor, the, a better understanding of what needs to play out and how it's going to play out. Now they have that experience. So if something bad should happen in the future, um, they've got that experience to draw on um, and things should move a little bit smoother. I would say, hey, let's go back through your notes after the fact. Let's discuss both Ryan and Sophie, let's discuss um, the process of the patient assessment that they did and what they think they could have done better, what they think went well. I think for the most part, it went pretty well. Um, so kudos to both of you. Um, I, I, think, I, I think you did a great job. And, um, and I think that's all I've got.